If you shoot while moving like this, you'll be a much tougher target to hit. And even though this looks like something only the pros can do, it's literally just pressing two buttons. Why climb buildings slowly like this when you can be like Super Mario and just wall jump your way up there? And after today's video, you will never have to awkwardly climb this gate again to loot the two chests on top of it. You can instead bring the chests straight to you. Today, I've got some tips that will help you with looting, moving, and of course, with fighting. And even tips that you can use outside the game to make your progress faster with daily missions or even character unlocks. And these are all things that the game doesn't teach you. Let's start with Coda. Coda is this unique civilian that once you rescue gives you three special vials. And these vials increase quirk levels for your entire team, which means finding Kota is the same as your team finding a total of 27 level up cards. This is huge, especially in the early game. But where is Kota, you might ask? Well, he's usually hiding in a bush, but can sometimes be found underneath a tree. Zine Cosma has actually started compiling a list of his locations that currently looks like this. We found a couple more spawns and made the map look a little bit better and this still doesn't have every single spawn and a single patch can always change stuff but as you can see this area right here is where most of the spawns are so it's worth running through the bushes whenever you find yourself in this place and you don't always have to fully enter a bush to see it the best thing to look out for is that looting tooltip that pops up once you're close enough to coda but guess what finding coda isn't as helpful if your teammates are dead what you really need at that point is some revive cards and these are not always easy to find the best bet is rescuing civilians these these usually have healing items and revive cards, which is exactly what you need. But wait, there are no civilians around. What do you do? You can always destroy buildings. There are many civilians that come out running once you destroy them. And some characters are better at destroying buildings than others, but everyone can punch a building until it falls. This is very loud and will reveal your position, but sometimes getting the revive cards is worth it. And speaking of revivals, whenever you get revived, your character does this whole animation, which is hella annoying because you can already get shot by the enemy team and yet you're stuck celebrating coming back to life. I mean, I get it, you're happy, but come on, let me play. Luckily, you can interrupt this animation by just pressing the attack button. And you can do this as the person doing the revival too, not just the teammates getting revived. Just be careful because if you do it too soon, you can interrupt the revival animation and that's not good for you or your teammates. But it's not just civilians and revival cars that you should be destroying buildings for. This can also make your looting faster. You see that bridge in collapse? It always has a golden chest, just shoot it down. You see this gate that's so incredibly annoying to climb because of its awkward angles? What if four shots is all it takes to bring it down? That's faster than climbing and the chests come straight down to you. I have never climbed this gate ever since I found this. And it's not just for looting. You've probably seen these battles in Fire or Typhoon where someone is shooting you from the rooftop. You don't have to give them the high ground. You can simply destroy that ceiling and bring them down to your level. But what if you want to get the high ground yourself? Any tips for fast climbing? Yes, Tim. Yes, there are. The first and easier method is with speed cards. Speed cards, when activated don't just give you a speed buff making you faster they also give you the ability to run up walls as if you were Ida himself and oh okay the game technically teaches you this one but it's only a tip during a loading screen and very often in the early game I just use the speed cards to loot stuff faster because chances are I will have a bunch of useless speed cards in my inventory anyway that is if none of my teammates are rapid types that said even without cards there are situations where you can wall jump like Super Mario himself let's say you want to climb this building you could just straight up climb it normally. Or if you just sprint around the back, you'll find this small alley, which means you can climb it much faster by wall jumping. It is that easy. And on the topic of passive buffs, did you know that you can use level up cards to level up your passive buffs? Y you did? Well, well, good for you. But for those that didn't know, let's say you've already maxed out your abilities. You're going into the late game and you've picked up some level up cards. These are not useless. You can use them for your passives. A leveled up card doesn't make its effect stronger, but it does make them last longer and I only learned that you could use level up cards on these recently so I thought it would be helpful for you too. And let's move on to an absolute game changer. When you use your alpha quirk with any character you will notice their movement speed slows down. Now you're running and now that you're shooting you're back to walking. This makes you an easier target to hit but there is a way to get rid of this slow movement and that is sprint jumping. If you throw your quirk as soon as you leave the ground you will keep that sprint momentum and this is great for chasing down kills because you can chase while shooting without sacrificing sacrificing movement, but even doing 1v1 battles, this will make you a much harder target to hit. And I know this looks very complex, but it's actually just two buttons. After you sprint, you just jump and use your quirk. The trick is to throw your quirk as soon as you leave the ground. If you take too long, you will land and you will not be sprinting anymore. But if you do it correctly, as soon as you land, the sprint will happen automatically, so you don't have to worry about the sprint button again. Now granted, this will take a while to get used to. In 1v1 battles, in the heat of the moment, you might not be able to pull this off perfectly, but if you try it out in practice mode, you're 
fingers will get used to it and slowly you'll start using this in more and more situations. Something I've also started using more recently is aiming down sights to change my trajectory whilst I'm airborne. Has this ever happened to you? You use a movement ability but your character ends up sideways to the building and so they won't turn around and grab that wall so they can climb it. Well, if you just aim down sights, you can turn your character so they can grab that same wall. As you can see, I can do this with Kirishima, who has some mobility but is not one of the best in the game. If you take this tech and give it to someone with higher mobility, you can even influence their airborne movement by aiming down sights. It's not just grabbing walls anymore, you can actually stop your character's momentum if you think you overdid a jump. So basically, you don't have to do a traitor anymore and throw yourself into the poison area by mistake. Okay, let's move on to the end game. You've made it most of the way through, there aren't many teams left, congratulations. Now you're in the end game. How do you get the upper hand? Well, if you're done looting, there's a way to prepare for the upcoming battles, and that's knowing who you're up against. And you can see who's left by holding the start or options button to bring up this menu and see who is still playing. Now, in this case, I saw three teams left, and I knew one of them was a Tsuyu, because we had already fought before. In addition to the Tsuyu, I see a Shigaraki, Bakugo, and Dabi, so I know who that final team is. But that's not all. I also know that Tsuyu is not going to be reviving her teammates. Because there is a flaw with this menu, and that is it also shows spectators. But because Tsuyu's teammates are not in this menu, that means they quit, which means Tsuyu is not going to revive them. So yeah, this isn't flawless because spectators also show up on this list, but usually players just quit whenever their team is eliminated. So this is a good way to see who you're going to lose to in the final fight. God damn it. And my final tips are outside of the game itself, but will still help you progress much faster. And the first tip is sending likes. Now, you might send likes by visiting the ranked leaderboard and opening each player's profile and send them 10 likes at a time. But a much faster way of doing this is by visiting your agency's member page. Here, you can just scroll through all the members and mash R2 to send them likes without having to open each individual profile. But why would you want to know this? This seems like a side thing. Well, every day, there is a daily quest for sending likes. Every week, we've got quests for sending likes too. And there's even a trophy for sending 10,000 likes. So trust me, this will make progression much faster, regardless of what your goal is. And finally, let's talk about crystals. Crystals are this game's paid currency, but if you're smart enough on how to use them, you can get a ton of crystals back and a ton of items without ever putting any money into it. In my opinion, this is the fastest way to unlock all the characters, is by being smart with your crystals. First place I'd say spend your crystals is on the pro license. It costs 4,800 crystals, but you'll get 4,500 back and you can easily make the rest with seasonal quests, login bonuses, and even the free license. The second place you should be spending crystals is on the premium login bonus. This will give you 10 tickets per day every day you log in. So that is 70 tickets guaranteed. Once that runs out, just buy it again. And that is it. These are the only two places that I recommend spending crystals on. However, if you really want to spend them to roll for new characters on the gacha, make sure you always check the shop because there might be some limited purchases that make the price of each ticket much lower than it would normally be. Never buy directly from the rolls page unless you've bought everything on the shop already. And I believe that's already more than 10 things that the game doesn't teach you, but if you're looking for something a bit more character specific, check out the latest gameplay video with Ida. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.